Hey guys, so this week I read this book. Um, it's called The Spirit Level, Why Equality is Better for Everyone. And it is so good. And I want to share all the evidence that these authors have compiled together, showing that inequality, that is the gap between the richest and the poorest in countries, directly correlates to how much violence there is, how much obesity there is, imprisonment rates, so many factors and this book shows it all um I'm, there's so much information though so this week i'm just going to be speaking about the psychology of humans and why we are actually really well adapted to being as equal as possible compared to as separate as possible which is the kind of society we live in now which promotes individ individualistic ideas and stuff so I think this book is something everyone should read, so let's do it. So to start off with, let's talk about why we're actually suited for equality. The two animals that we come from, chimpanzees and bonobos, are both cute but co both completely different. Chimpanzees on the one hand are very hierarchy orientated and they have a male dominating all the time and those males have to compete to get the best females and the best food. Whilst on the other hand, these bonobos, they're very peaceful and very friendly and they don't like they don't have a dominance hierarchy in the same way that the chimpanzees do. In fact, females are just as equal as males and the bonobos just have sex to get rid of any tension and it promotes friendliness and it's a very peaceful society between them. So we can see that by the two things that we came from, we clearly have a side of us that does like competing and does like dominance. But on the other hand, we do have a side that loves equality. And this is just like an intro to show why this is actually psychologically backed. So what these authors first address is why we're also sensitive to inequality in the first place. Like, why is there even a point of making societies more equal instead of just completely on the other end of the spectrum? And it's all a bit of a story, so bear with me. So it starts in the 1950s, kind of, where we start seeing a rise in anxiety and in depression. And until the 1990s, this is pretty much a completely exponential upwards increase. We don't really know the reason for that, except that they're rising. But simultaneous to this rise, the authors found that there was the rise in the self-esteem movement, which started in like the 1980s, which is when people started getting more confident. They started feeling more proud of themselves, they started appreciating themselves, and it was kind of confusing as to why we're seeing anxiety levels increasing and people's self-esteem increasing. And so lots of tests were done on these people that had deemed that their self-esteem was high in these experiments or whatever. And they found that a lot of that self-esteem was actually fake and that it was a sense of inflated egoism or narcissism as we know it today, where these people didn't actually have very high self-esteem, but were rather just putting up a tough front and internally had very low self-esteem. And when one has low self-esteem, they have, they have trouble making friends, they have trouble accepting their faults and many other things that come at a fault to society. So we have this rise in anxiety and we have this rise in this ego egoism slash narcissism. Why are these two joining in at the same time, both increasing? It doesn't really make sense. Well, they discovered that it's because of something called social evaluative threats. And these threats are basically just things you feel when you feel inferior whether it's not doing as well as someone, not having as good a job as someone else, or any form of embarrassment or humiliation you feel, which is felt by every single person. Once the self-esteem movement in the 1980s has kind of taken its rise, a lot of research was done on the notion of stress after discovering that a lot of these self-esteem people were just lying. And people started to realize that stress was actually a huge part of diminishing health. A lot of stress experiments were conducted whereby they took lots of people and they made them do lots of different activities. They made one do a maths test, they made one talk to another person, they made one talk to a stranger, whatever, everything you can think of. And what they did is they measured their cortisol hormone, which is the stress hormone in our body. And they saw whether it rose or whether it decreased pre and post the certain thing that they were doing. And what they found is that our stress hormone increases the most when we were under these social evaluative threats. That is, whenever someone was doing something where they were being judged about it or whether their rank in society was being considered or how well they were doing was considered. So once these stress experiments continued and they found out that social evaluative threats were the biggest stress on a human, they concluded that the three biggest stresses in life are number one, a low social status, number two, a lack of friends, and number three, stress in early life, which would just automatically transfer to adulthood unconsciously. And so what this all indicates is that the three biggest stresses in our life 
is our ability to get along with one another, how confident we feel with each other and with strangers and with just generally society. So that shows that when we're super unequal and when we constantly feel judged or inferior to someone, we don't feel good. And that's just not about the poor compared to the rich. That's 90% of society who are all striving to be at the top because they always feel inferior unconsciously. So what we've learned from all these experiments that you did is that how people see you matters and it's wired into your brain. And obviously there are a few exceptions, but in general, what these authors said is that the further up the social ladder you are, the more help the world seems to give you in keeping your self doubts at bay, which I think is completely true. Social status has become so ingrained in the way that we define ourselves and that stems from everything, the way our house looks, what our job is, what we buy. I mean, when you first meet someone, the first thing they ask you is what you do for a living and that, that gives them the first impression about you. And to tie it into one of the factors that they considered in this book, violence, it makes sense why when we have a super unequal society, violence is more likely to increase. Because violence is always conducted when someone is humiliated or feels inferior or feels shame. And they're more likely to feel all of these things when the world is telling them that they're always not good enough. And as all those experiments conducted before showed us, all humans' cortisol stress hormone increases when we're under these social evaluative threats. It's natural. We're not supposed to be living like this. So back to that anxiety thing though. If inequality wasn't the reason though that anxiety began to increase, what was? Well, the book says that maybe it's the fact that we're constantly moving all the time now. Before we were planted in these super small communities and we married our next door neighbor, we stayed and we saw everyone die and everyone get born in that tiny little town or city. And we didn't really go much further than that. No one so new appeared in our lives. We were very comfortable with everyone around us since we'd known them since we were born. But now we're moving from place to place very quickly. We're having to adjust to seeing new people and new strangers almost all the time and so we're facing these social evaluative threats even more so and this makes sense why these anxiety levels began to increase because people started to care more about how others were viewing them because they were not just seeing people that they knew they were seeing tons of other people that they knew and so to round it all up why does this all show that it's linked to greater inequality well well it's basically what i said that the more social evaluative threats we have the more at risk for people being more obese, more violence occurring in society, more teenage births, so many things that they've all covered in this book, which I'm going to talk about next video, the actual reasons why inequality causes those certain facets. But yeah, like, I think it's super interesting. I mean, I'm not saying, and I don't think they're saying either, that we want to be in a communist state where everyone is equal. You know, some jobs should get more money than others, but the gap should be closer and all the countries where the gap is closer Sweden, Finland, Norway, Japan they all have a better quality of life because people feel more comfortable with each other people don't feel inferior they feel more equal to the people around them and that matters um, which is why I think this book is so good um, but yeah I hope that made sense and I'm going to be speaking more about this book next week because it's so good and speaking about how how mental health, physical health, obesity, education, teenage births, violence, imprisonment are all affected by inequality. So I hope you enjoyed and see you later. Bye!